TV. Hello everyone, welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. What a day it has been already. Tuesday, November the 2nd, have Newcastle United got their man? I'm here with Sam and here with Carl for the next half an hour to talk all things Unai Emery. Yes, that's right, Unai Emery is the big, big favourite and has been reported by several media outlets that it looks like he will become the successor to Sir Steve Bruce. Uh, Sam Mullen, let's get your thoughts on this news this morning. Unai Emery, it's the man that you wanted if uh, we look back at five live, shall we, Sam? Uh, yeah, well, first of all, good evening. Um, good, great, great to see you all. Um, yeah, I mean, let just just indulge me briefly, just briefly, because this is what happened the other the other week on Five Live. And, um, he's had a wonderful career in the game. Who would you like to see take over at St James's Park? <sighs> Do you know? <laughs> A few weeks ago, I stood outside Molyneux after a, a defeat at Wolves before the takeover, and the favourites for the job was Chris Wilder and Eddie Howe and, and, and Graham Jones, who's obviously caretaker today. And now <laughs> the takeover's happened, and you see names like Conte being linked, and, and Fonseca seems to be the, the overwhelming favourite now. Um, I quite like Unai Emery, for, to be honest. Cheers. <laughs> I quite like Unai Emery. Carl, do you quite like Unai Emery? I do. I do. Um, I'd, I'd, other than that, um, until it really, like, he started creeping into the bookies' odds and things like that over the last few, few weeks, it didn't really resonate with me that it was a, pot a potential for him to come. But, yeah, like, I've, I've, I've started to gravitate massively towards this foreign um, new foreign culture being brought in, and I was always excited around Faro or Fonseca. So to, for Emre to actually be the favourite, like I said to you boys in the, in the chat, like I'm, I'd be absolutely over the moon if we get him. Yeah, Boyle Sports have got Unai Emery. Last last time I saw was one to four on to become the next Newcastle United manager. But this was reported; it broke about two hours ago through David Onstein from the Athletic. Uh, the athletic we've worked with a, a lot in the last couple of years, like Lyons with uh, Chris Watt and George Colgan. We'll mention George in a second because he's got some very interesting news in regards to um, Unai Emery and potentially even Eddie Howe as well. That's another name that's been cropped up as well. But George Colgan and Chris Watt both work for the athletic. As I've mentioned, David Ornsey broke the story as an exclusive between the two, Unai Emery and Eddie Howe, but they want Emery. Emery impressed them more in interviews. Why do you think he impressed them more, Sam? Because he, I know his record speaks for itself, but what do you think he said to these new owners to go, do you know what? Yeah, I like, I like the sound of that. Pedigree, European pedigree. Um, uh, a CV that is full of victories for a start, which is, which is nice. And to be honest, like I've got nothing against Eddie Howe, really, but... It, if you're going to get Eddie Howe in, then why waste all this time? Yeah. And and Eddie Howe is an appointment because take over or no take over, Steve Bruce was under pressure to keep his job. And Eddie Howe is a kind of appointment that could have easily have happened without a takeover. So um as as I as I said the other week, Unai Emery was was my choice. I didn't think it was realistic. I know he's still at Villarreal and I know the they're in the Champions League tonight, aren't they? But they're, they're not doing brilliantly in the league. But what I love about Emery is, um, well, apart from being a very, very good manager, is he loves a cup run and he loves winning cups. So that, that that's what I think we're all aiming to do before we get carried away from climbing the league table. Obviously, first and foremost, we, we, we know that we've got to we've got to stay up this season. We, we know that. That goes without saying now. Um but yeah, if there's a if there's a cup run involved, then um, yeah, I'm I'm all for it. Sign me up, Carl. Just before I bring you in um, on Emery, just Tottenham have appointed Antonio Conte as their new manager or head coach. Now the Premier League just seems to be getting bigger and bigger in terms of managerial names. Unai Emery has, like Sam says, a European pedigree: four mm. Europa League titles, 
three in a row whilst at Sevilla and beat Liverpool over Jurgen Klopp. It was Jurgen Klopp's first season, if you remember, the likes of Benega, uh, Koke as well. So there's some, there's some real big names. But one thing that he does like, he does like the 4 2 3 1 formation, which will be music to Sion's ears. He does like 4 3 3 as well, but it won't be defensive. Should it be more on the front foot if this happens? Absolutely. I think that's, I know we're, we're obviously worried about our defensive issues, but one way to try and immediately combat that is go out and utilise the, the attacking force that we've got and try and get as many goals as possible. Um, you know, obviously we need to address the defence, but we can't do that until uh, until January. Um, we've tried the formations to try and suit the players that we've got in, in defence, and unfortunately that's not working. So I would prefer us to go out on the attack and, and try and grab some goals and work in the defence in the meantime. Um, because we're not utilising the attacking prowess that we've got in the in the squad, so I think these types of appointments can benefit that massively. Hundred percent. And Sam, it was reported by a lot of media outlets that Eddie Howe and obviously Unai Emery had interviews over the weekend. It looks like now that Unai Emery is having talks, discussions with Newcastle, and has been the case in the last forty-eight hours. Is he actually turns fifty tomorrow? And does Unai Emery? It could be quite the birthday present because Newcastle, it's a massive, massive project. And we need a manager in for this game against Brighton on Saturday because for the last two games, we've barely deserved a point from the two games that we've got. Yeah, um, and, and even Graham Jones said it himself after the game on Saturday, we need fresh eyes and fresh input into this squad because it, it's just not working. Graham Jones is just sticking with the same tactics that he kind of encouraged Steve Bruce to play. So nothing nothing really had changed. I mean, one shot on target in the 80th minute on Saturday against Chelsea's loan development squad and B team was pretty embarrassing, to say the least. Um, look, attack is the best form of defence. Um there are a couple. I know we've got a tricky run of fixtures coming up, but there are there are some winnable games in there, and they they have to be won. Let's let's not get away from it. I mean, we're six points adrift already, but there's there's plenty enough time to 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 get into safety. League wise, it's all about muddling through, isn't it? But a four two three one would would certainly um, go a long way to utilising our attacking players and and get us through to January. Carl, if you look at Emery in particular, started out of Valencia 2008, 2012, we're talking about big jobs here. 50% win record just under. He had a brief spell at Spartak Moscow and then did so well at Sevilla. He was there for three years and again won the Europa League, as I've mentioned, three times in a row. And then that got that big move to Paris Saint Germain. So he's used to that expectation of an influx of money and making sure that he can make the right signings to improve the team. Now, He's going to have a similar war chest at Newcastle now. Surely that experience at PSG is only going to help him at Newcastle. I know different scales in terms of the type of team that PSG have got back then and what Newcastle have got now, but at least he knows how to use the money. Definitely. And, you know, mentioning the win percentages, uh, you know, Paris Saint-Germain, I think he lost 12 games, or something like that. Was some won 87 and lost 12 games. I think that's what I looked at earlier. Um, yeah, even at Arsenal, he only lost 19 games <laughs> in the Premier League across 78 games. That's not bad. That's not a bad return. Like, it, it, he doesn't lose many games um, if, if you actually look at his record in comparison to the, the games that he plays. So I think that with um, in conjunction with being able to have this war chest and go out and spend it wisely, you know, I think I, I genuinely, if we appoint him, I, I don't think there's any risk of us getting relegated. I really don't. I think he, he's a massive appointment for us. I think we've got to do everything we can to get him. Do you agree with Carl almost, Sam, that this appointment, if it, if it, if it happens with Unai Emery, that Newcastle United have just got their ticket out of relegation and it's going to be survival because of the appointment that we're going to be making here? Um, I mean, our, our chances would have certainly increased. I mean, it's not as cut and dry as, as that. Um, there's still a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. Um, but yeah, our, our chances increase massively. Of course, it does. Um, similar to to when we went down under Rafa, if if we'd have had Rafa sooner, and if we'd have got rid of Steve McLaren sooner, then we we would have been okay, probably. Um, especially with that squad, Jesus, squad then was better than it is now. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, 
yeah, it, it would be nice. It'd be nice to see him, whether or not he'd be in the dugout or in the stands at Brighton. I've got to be honest; I'm not expecting anything from that game. Will he? If if he's there, he will bring a lift, undoubtedly. But um, look, the, the the preparation from it and and the and the the setup will probably be Graham Jones's. Um, Graham Jones has won to lead, so I'm not expecting anything from the Brighton game. But he then, of course, has two weeks during the international break to to get his ideas into place. There's not many in the squad that are going away to international duty; just the usual suspects like your Frasers, your Almirons, your Jeff Hendricks of this world. So um, yeah, gives him plenty of time to to get his ideas across on the training ground. That's the important thing, isn't it, Carl? the training yeah. sessions now because he needs to get the players. Like he's, he's got these players for at least eight weeks, at yeah. least eight weeks, probably more likely to be 12 weeks because getting business done in January, it's normally towards the end of January with a lot of clubs at even Newcastle. It's a lot, it's going to be difficult. So he's got to implement a strategy straight away from the off because if you look at the next four or five pictures for Newcastle, take away Arsenal who are in fantastic form. There's some winnable games there. Your Brighton's, Brighton, yes, they've had a fantastic start, but Come they're not the ball a bit, Man City. They? They're not Liverpool. You've got the likes of Brentford who are just kind of dipping a little bit. They drew with Liverpool. Well, I, I, I still think that's a game we can get something from. Burnley and Norwich, they're the, they're the two games for me at the end of November, early December. Yeah. Burnley and Norwich, we need, we need to be getting six points from there just to make sure that we're a little bit more comfortable. Um, but that strategy is very, very important, Carl. He has to implement it quickly. Definitely. It's got to be a, a literal case of getting in, um, you know, no disrespect to Graham Jones, but I imagine he'll no longer be at the club. Essentially getting rid of anyone that was affiliated with the previous backroom staff and, and bringing in his his regime, essentially. And day one, putting, that, like you said, that, that, that uh, kind of routine in place. This is how it is. We're training five days a week. This is what we're going to be focusing on for the next eight weeks, whether it's attacking or whatever. And then, you know, having uh, particular people working on the defensive issues in the background, but having a mainstay on on attacking focus, for example, and saying, this is our ethos. This is our philosophy. This is how we're going to play for eight weeks. And this is how we're going to do it. That needs to be done straight away, definitely. Arsenal is a job that he's had in England already. And I've heard the phrase unfinished business, Sam, in regards to the Premier League. At Arsenal, he had a 55% win ratio in 18 months at Arsenal. He took over Arsenal Wenger. Ultimately, in that first season, they were a game away from getting back into the Champions League, through the league, and through the Europa League. So, from an outsider that probably saw a little bit of Arsenal, do you think they were unlucky, or do you feel that they, they, they ruined it, they spoiled their own opportunity by getting back into the Champions League? But were you impressed by the way he implemented his strategy at Arsenal? I liked him at Arsenal. I've always been a fan of his, to be honest, since since Sevilla. Um, I thought he probably did. You could definitely make an argument, and, and I would be on the, this side of that, that he did deserve more time at Arsenal. Um, well, there must be something in the in the North London water. Um I mean, arrogance, the, maybe? I, arrogance. Well, I don't know, but I'm I'm just looking forward to our silence for no uh, Espirito Santo later on today, sponsored by Talksport. Um, but I digress. Um, yeah, he he's he's he, he did. I don't think he did terribly bad, and we and we saw like when these big club legends leave, your Wenger's, your your Alex Ferguson's. It's a hard act to follow, and I don't think he did too bad given the circumstances at all. I mean, look, Arsenal are still rebuilding now, and they are on the way back up. Um, they're playing a lot better now than they were a couple of weeks ago, but I think he um, deserved a bit more time. So I think unfinished business is, is spot on. In his first season at Arsenal, Carl, he had like a 22-match and beaten run halfway through the season. And they were beating teams like Tottenham, where you know Tottenham were ahead of Arsenal at this point. And I think they won by four, uh, I think it was four goals to two or five goals to two, something like that, uh, midway through that season. And they, they played some really entertaining football. The second season didn't work what, for whatever reason. It was, did, did he won Nicola Pepe? And I'm not too sure. I think Wilfred Zaha was more an Emery choice than the Arsenal choice, I think, at the end of, uh, at the end of that season. But it looks like he would want to shoe and says, I'm bringing players in. 
and he he's going to he's going to be loved at Newcastle as well in the sense that the fans are going to really take to him because first things first he's not Steve Bruce whether yeah. like people like that or not but it, it surely it can't go wrong for him in that first say twelve to fourteen weeks if he can just tinker it ever so slightly and then January make the big signs make those three or four signs that we desperately need. Yeah, and I think we just reiterate though that it can't go wrong for him. Surely, like if he's given the assurances, and worst came to worst, and we got relegated, for example, it would be down to him because the backroom staff. I mean, uh, the board wouldn't want to to get rid of him. Still, I don't think. If, if you're in the championship, you're going to get rid of Unai Emery, probably not. Um, so for me, the only way is up. Um, and like you both said, you know, unfinished business. He's one of going. He's going to want to prove a point. Like I said, I think he only lost nineteen games at Arsenal, which is is you know minimal across two seasons. Um, I can't see any negativity about the appointment whatsoever. I really can't, uh, and I'm unbelievably excited for it to because I think it will happen to Sam, to be you, announced. Sorry, Carl. I was just going to say, Sam, if you had the choice between Unai Emery and Mikel Arteta right now, who would you have? Uh, uh, Emery. But that, that's, yeah. as I say, I'm, I've, I've always been a fan of Emery. So um, that's just my opinion. But look, Arteta's getting the time, really, that Emery didn't. If Emery did the, had the first season, or the, the first two seasons that he did, that Arteta did, sorry, then, you know. But look, there's still some way to go yet. It's not completely agreed. Six million it's going to cost. Um, which is still cheaper than That's what Bruce back got. change pocket. That's back pocket change. Sorry, back pocket well, it's change. Their, it's their first, this is it. It's their first signing now. Their first signing. Yeah, it is. Um, Six million. So it's still still cheaper than what they had to pay off Steve Bruce. So, which is ridiculous. Um, I know. And then uh, Nuno got was it ten from Spurs? Mm. Which is, Feel yeah. so sorry for Nuno. Do you? Yeah, I do. You know, like I do. Yeah. I feel sorry for his family. I feel sorry for everybody involved with Nuno because he's been hounded out by Spurs. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's a completely different media portrayal, isn't it? But hey-ho. As uh, as Sam says, I, di- I-, I digress. <laughs> that is your yeah. saying, Michael. Um, I don't know. I didn't realise I did say it a lot. I know I, <laughs> I, know I do it a lot, but um, <laughs> I didn't realise I say it a lot. But the, the, that's the thing. that it's, Nuno's not English and he... He's not part of that boy, big boys club, is he? That you know, all all the uh, mates in the media. But um, it is what it is. I'm sure he'll get another job soon rather than later, won't he? And with a it'll, ten million payoff, that should keep him out of the job centre for a while. It will be exactly the same with Dean Smith. I'm telling you. I spoke to fans this morning. Everyone at the game say they want him there. Nobody wants him to go. But Twitter fans kicking off. Talk sports, Sky Sports News picking up on it. I guarantee he'll be gone in the next three weeks and it will be because of the media and everyone. Will, they'll, but they'll start blaming Villa fans for it. Fonseca. Yeah, yeah, it's in that. One thing I want to mention, actually, so I'm probably better to ask you because of, obviously from the betting side of things, you said to me last week you've never seen anything like this in the sense that when you look at companies like Boyle Sports, for example, they didn't really have an an outstanding favourite. No one really went, this is the man that's really going to take over. And even as, as early as last week, was something like the, the, the actual like national favourite, is it 13 to 2 for a managerial appointment? Well, Can you just explain uh, that to people? So, so, right, okay. So most of what you said there is accurate. Um, at, at the start, the overwhelming favourite was um, Fonseca, who was odds on. I think he was about 8 to 13 on. So yeah. um, the clip I played at the start of on five live me saying i wanted emery that was the day of the palace match and um fonseca was odds on that since that went quiet um because apparently it was all agreed people like um fabrizio romano was saying that um it was all agreed they're just waiting to kind of pull the trigger and definitely say congratulations you've got the job that hasn't happened but with them reports that the market reacted and, and Fonseca was odds on for a good few days. When that went quiet and nothing was happening, then you had 
Favre, Fonseca was still there, Lampard, then Lampard dropped away because I think, I don't know whether he was interviewed, but whatever happened, happened, and, and it was clear that he wasn't going to get the job. Then um, uh, Leonardo Jardim, who was coaching Al Halal in Saudi, he got backed in from ridiculous price to short price. And then at one point, it was 13 to 2 the field, which is like Grand National Day. So it, it, it was unbelievable. So no one had a clue, basically. And, and when these reports were coming in now, apparently they didn't even start. Well, they interviewed Emery Sunday night via Zoom. And the same with Eddie Howe, apparently, um, which is what Downey, Keith Downey or, or George, George Colton, Colton, one of the two, said on, said on Twitter. Yeah. So, I mean, it's quite interesting, that, actually, because when we're stood outside St. James's after Elsa game, they still hadn't spoken to anyone. And then, of course, yesterday, Emery said he knew nothing about the, the Newcastle yeah. job. The which I like. Yeah, banter, <laughs> Um, Carl, he's at Villarreal. He's been there since 2020. He's won the Europa League. I'm surprised Emery named the Europa League the Unai Emery Cup. Um, Mr. Mr. Europa, something Mr. like that. Mr. Europa himself. But it is funny. It's funny because you look at his record at Villarreal, just under 50 percent again. It's very mm -hmm. similar, apart from PSG, which of course is the French league, and that escalated with 76.3 percent. So look, it's 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 very much an even keel. If you look at the other clubs bar PSG. Um, beat Manchester United in the Europa League final last year. Beat Arsenal over two legs in the semi-final. They should have absolutely destroyed Arsenal in the first leg yeah. um, in Spain. But again, it's just music to the ears of Newcastle fans if this if this comes up because he is just a, he's a team and a manager you just don't want to go up against because you're not guaranteed any sort of victory or any sort of results. Because even at Old Trafford a couple of weeks ago. Villarreal should have at least got a point against Manchester United, but there's a there's a there's a player called Cristiano Ronaldo that was just a bit on form that night. But it's all looking rosy from a Newcastle fan point of view. Definitely, um, like I keep saying I'm I'm sat here. I'm, my excitement is just growing and growing and growing. I I really uh, I, I just want it to be announced. But yeah, he's um he's exactly that. He's a team you don't. He's the person you don't really want to go uh, go up against because without. Throwing too much disrespect to Villarreal, obviously they've got some relatively decent players, but they're they're not world beaters by any stretch of the imagination. Individually, by any stretch of the imagination, and whatever philosophy he's got in place there he, is clearly working. So I think it could be a relatively, I don't easy is probably the 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 wrong word, but maybe a seamless transition for some of the players that we've got here to to incorporate here and see what 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 he can do. There's no downside here. There really isn't for me. Sam, we have to put two sides of the, the story to this. He's 13th in the league with Villarreal right now. They haven't started brilliantly. So he's probably thinking, well, if I get out now to Newcastle, people can forget about this for three months. Yeah, but it's still... It's, it's... I know we've got money in the bank and whatnot, but we're nineteenth in the Premier League, so it's it's hard. you're hardly coming in to bliss and serenity, are you? It's 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 going to be a bit of a slog for the next two three months, isn't it? Until you can get your own players in. January is not an easy window at the best of times, so it's a big job. It's a big risk for him. It's a big big risk for him. But um, it's nice to see someone like that willing to take the risk because they can see the bigger picture and see the potential. Um, I tell you what, after the, I mean, they, they play young boys tonight, don't they? In the Champions League, it's going to be one hell of a uh, post-match press conference. Or even if he's if he's in the dugout at all. I was going to say, what um, if he's not there? <laughs> I think he will be. Yeah. Um, from from what's been saying, because I think talks are set to resume tomorrow, so I don't think anything's that cut and dry today, at least. I think you but, can't be uh, after you can't not be after him saying that he's not spoken to us basically yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, that answer might have to change a little bit today. <laughs> It'll be something on the lines of, um, I'm not in a position to talk about my future. I'm here to talk about the football. I'm here to talk about the game against the young boys, which I don't think many Newcastle fans thought of this morning. I'll tell you what, I might watch Villarreal versus young boys later on. Yeah, I know, right? I think a lot of Newcastle fans yeah, might just have a little look, look, look and see 
Oh, this is how he likes to play, does he? <laughs> Can't wait to watch this. I got to Brighton at the Alex on Saturday. Right up half a Twitter like, later on, so after young boys like mid like put four past them saying, "Oh, we don't want Emra." Watch Villa Real with five no night, and oh, you'll see Twitter highlights. You'll have channels going. This is what. Johnny, really, we've got Johnny. to expect in the future. Actually, is the fact? Oh, is that me going at you? No, that's oh. that's all you, my friend. <laughs> That's We're it. just going to sit back Fantastic. and let it happen. <laughs> Go on, you're back. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Um, Carl, one thing that is very interesting is that at Villarreal is that the Champions League is such a massive attraction. He's going to be leaving that if he takes Newcastle on. And it's, it's a good chance they could still qualify and get into the last 16. It is a very interesting decision, um, uh, allowing that to kind of fall by the wayside, which would reiterate what you said about him having certain assurances from from the board. So it, they must have put a very lucrative and attractive package together. And I think um, they, I think they come out and said that you know they didn't want to get an interim manager in now. So him appointing him, I think we can all expect him to 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 be at the in the hot seat for a while, providing things go well and for him to to be the one to build this um uh, should we say dynasty that's coming? Because we are fucking coming. That's very positive. <laughs> um but yeah I think I think that's that's probably what they would uh, you know in a in a more articulate manner would have would have put across to him. Um Sam, one thing as well, just we've we've got a couple of minutes before we finish. Um, it call it says dynasty. Are we being a bit too early with that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, watch <laughs> out, Nottingham, Nottingham Forest, and and rather in as they come up next season. Barnsley, away, there's a long though. way to go. Sorry, I know. I there's nothing more I want to do than 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 dream about the future and talk about the the players we're going to sign, which. There will be time for that, but not on the second of November. Sorry, but it'll it's, the time will be coming for that very soon. Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, there's a lot, long, long way to go because otherwise, we could ease. Stranger things have happened, and it would wouldn't it just be typical Newcastle that you're the richest club oh, yeah. in the world and you go down? <laughs> if that that could only happen to us. So, look, we've got we've, there's there's points to be won first of all, and that needs to start at Brighton on Saturday, and it's going to be very, very tough indeed. Carl, everyone was saying you don't want to be this appointment, you want to be the next appointment. Why do you think Emery wants to be this appointment? I just think that, one, he's, he's clearly going to have confidence in his ability and I think that the board would, put, would have put across to him that you're not going to be the interim manager. This is this is basically yours for the taking. You know, if you make this work, it's yours. If you don't, then you will be the interim manager. But um, I just think he'd have been given those assurances where, you know, no disrespect to Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe would have been an interim manager, for example, wouldn't he? he he'd have been someone that would try and get the stabilise the boat, but realistically know that he's probably not going to be there long term. Um, and I think they'd have just given him so many assurances. They would have had to because, like you said, potentially dropping Champions League football, regardless of what's on the table, is a very big decision to make. Yeah, very much so. Very, very much so. Last couple of questions before we end things this afternoon. Um, Sam, can this go wrong? And if it can, if it, do, will it, if it does go wrong, how do we look at this from the, an owner's point of view? Because it, this is their biggest decision so far. Panic. Well, of course it's their biggest decision so far. They've, they've not been here that long. Um, Bruce was always going to leave. History tells us that. I mean, history also tells us that we need to sign Sean Wright Phillips and Wayne Bridge, but I don't think that'll happen. Um, but Chelsea, Bring back City, Joe. yeah, Joe, exactly. Yeah. Um, who would be their equivalents right now? Sorry, um, Zaha do we have one in Joe Linton anyway? Zaha and, and Max Aarons, perhaps, or Zaha and Lamptey, Lamptey, yeah, Lamptey. Well, speaking after Reese James absolutely demolished Matt Ritchie last Saturday, I mean, Lamptey against Ritchie this Saturday could be interesting, but yeah, um, that, maybe uh... that's uh, one for Jamal Lewis. Although, saying that, Jamal Lewis got destroyed by Lamptey last season, didn't he? 
Oh, can't yes. wait to say. Um, anyway, yes, it all could go wrong. Of course it could. Very, very easily. But um, look, he's a top-class manager. And just to build on what Carl said there, he, he Emery's the kind of appointment that can be, he can still become elite level management, if you know what I mean, because he's got, he had the PSG job, didn't he? And he's, he's, he's at that level now where he's just on the, maybe on the cusp of that, that level below the elite managers, isn't he? So as I say, he's 50 tomorrow. So there's still a good 10 years left of him. So, but yeah, it, it, it could go wrong very easily, but I hope it doesn't. So do I. Carl, if this appointment happens, are Newcastle going to stay up this season? Yes. Not even debating it, yeah. Sam? Yep. Very confident. Very <laughs> confident. It's going to be an interesting 24, 40 hours at Newcastle. Will Unai Emery be the next manager? It looks very, very likely from what you hear from everybody that Newcastle have got their new man. It looks like it's going to be after Villarreal's Champions League match against the Young Boys tonight in Spain. Get in the comments. Would you be happy if Unai Emery is the next Newcastle manager? Or do you still want Eddie Howe? Do you want somebody else? Get in the comments below. A big thanks to our sponsors, Boyle Sports, for this sponsorship for them until the end of November. And like and subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV. We'll have all the What we got coming up on Thursday? We've got a Greenwood and Mulliner show. Yes, we do. Do you want to tell who it's, who it is with, or do you want to just say it? Uh, no, so we're going to be speaking to one of the lads from War Flags because they're back and they're better than ever and they are brilliant. So what a perfect time to, to get Thomas on. Yeah, it'd be fantastic. So make sure you keep an eye out for that later on in the week. But we have got Brighton on Saturday. Lee and Brandon and Carl, you might be there or are you still going to be in the hospital? Right no, there? I'm not going to be there, unfortunately. I wish I was, I'm not. Um yeah, my brother has a ticket for sale, just to tout that, if anyone's interested. <laughs> <laughs> but Lee and Brandon, Brandon will be making his debut uh, for Newcastle Fans TV in front of camera and a match as well, so make sure you have a little watch at that as well. Big thanks to Sam Muller, big thanks to Carl Bryant. Like and subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV, and we'll see you all very soon.